So this question is a diagram question, right? Any question that provides some visual input, I'm gonna call a diagram question. More specifically, this question is all about our understanding of how to read graphs. So the first thing I want you to know about this question and really any graph question is that the ordered pairs provided or the ones that you can figure out are, are typically gonna be important to know. Right, so we have these ordered pairs. We have two comma five, we have four comma five, and we have three comma one as our ordered pairs. So let's look at the question and see what we're being asked to find here. So the question says that the graph of the function f in the xy plane above is a parabola. Okay, so hopefully we recognize that already. The question part says which of the following defines f? Okay, so we're basically looking for, right, so this defines f basically means which one of these equations describes the graph. And even more specifically, which one of these equations fits the ordered pairs that they told us must be in the graph. So what I like to do is say, well, this two comma five, right, really means when x equals two, then y or f of x, right, which y equals f of x, must equal five. Right, so these become points that we can plug into the equation if we like. So if x equals 4, for the right equation, when I plug 4 in for x, the f of x better be equal to 5 as well. And again, when I plug x equals 3, the f of x better equal 1 for the actual correct answer listed here. So that's one way to do it. We can use something called substitution or I even call it plug-in information from the question, right, because those ordered pairs were provided by the question, we can plug those in to the answer choices and see which one of them ends up being the correct answer. Let's try that for choice A, just so you see an example of how to do that. And then I'll show you one other way to answer this question. So choice A says f of x equals four. Now I'm gonna try, I'm gonna go with, uh, with this one, the two comma five. So instead of x, I'm gonna say two minus three squared plus one. And again, I'm looking to see, does this end up giving me a f of x equals five? Let's see if that's true. So two minus three is negative one. So we have negative one squared with the four plus the one. Um, and then negative one squared is positive one. So we have four times one plus one. And yeah, four, so this is four plus one, four plus one is five. So I'm getting f of x equals five. So that pretty much tells me that I like A as a good contender. Maybe I'd go back in and see, well, what happens if I replaced this two with a four, right? Now trying this, this one. That would just make this a positive one, which keeps everything the same. And then what if I replaced the X with a three? This will be three minus three. So this makes that zero. Then I'd have zero squared there, which then turns this into zero. Okay, so then we have a problem, right? Because then we'd only have f of x equals, no, I'm sorry, we wouldn't have a problem. We had f of x equals one, which is exactly what we want, right? When we plug x equals three and we want f of x equal one. So although I was just doing this as an example, choice A is the correct answer, right? I plugged in every option. I plugged in x equals two and I got a five out, I plugged in x equals four, and I got a five out, and I plugged in x equals three, and I got a one out of it. So answer choice A is definitely the best answer. Well, how else could you do this? Well, there's a more mathematical way to do it. And that more mathematical way to approach this is worth discussing, because I do think it's worthwhile um, having you know this. So I'm gonna write this out, y equals plus or minus a, parentheses x plus or minus b, squared plus or minus c. So we need to understand the format, which this is the format of all of our answer choices, um, what all these things mean, okay? So in a parabola, this plus or minus here tells me the direction of the parabola. So if it's a positive, the parabola faces up. If it's negative, the parabola faces down. This a value here basically gives me the width of the uh, parabola, right? So if this is if A is greater than one, it's gonna be a narrow, right? And if A is less than one, it's gonna be a wide parabola, okay? Now this plus or minus B here, 
has to do with the horizontal shift. So if it's positive, and this is the only weird thing about this one, if it's positive, the shift is left. Whereas if it's negative number, the shift is right, that number of B units, okay? And lastly, this plus or minus C here, if it's positive, that means we're shifting the parabola up. If it's negative, we're shifting it down. So that understanding helps me because the what we are, we're comparing this parabola to is a parabola that has a vertex at zero, zero, right? So it's like our generic parabola, which would be f of x equals x squared, or like y equals x squared, same thing. So like, how do we move, how does this parabola move from the zero, zero, the origin, to where it currently is? Well, it shifted to the right three units, and it shifted, it shifted up one unit, um, and we can see that it's pretty narrow, but here's another little way to figure out what the A term actually is. To go from the origin to the, f to the first point here, I have to go up four units and to the left one or to the right one, right? So A will equal four, B will equal negative three because we're shifting to the right, and C will equal positive one because we're shifting up. So when I plug all those things in, we see that answer choice A accomplishes that, right? My f the, the parabola is facing up, so it's positive. It, I go up 4 and over 1, which is what makes that A value actually equal to 4. I have a negative 3 inside the parentheses, which tells me that I'm shifting to the right 3 units. And I have a positive 1 out here, which tells me that I'm shifting up 1 unit.